Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking this old sitting room chair and we are going to be doing a full restoration on it. This chair is actually owned by the same client that I did the bridge table for in my last video. If you haven't seen that I'll leave a card up above. He got given this by his gran about uh, 30 years ago. Unfortunately, it's been hung up in his garden shed. He's really wanted to get something done with this and that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a full restoration and a bit of reupholstery. So stay tuned and you'll see a really, really beautiful transformation. This is a solid mahogany chair. They don't really make them like this anymore. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoy it. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all my loyal subscribers out there. If you like restoration videos and furniture makeovers, then please consider subscribing to my channel. My unofficial goal is to try and get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's a big ask, but hopefully you can help me in getting there. Either way, just sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Hi, I'm David and I restore, restyle and refinish old and loved furniture. I use a variety of methods and techniques to bring this forgotten furniture back to life. Welcome to my channel. Obviously, after spending the last 30 years of its life in a garden shed, this needed a thorough cleaning. So it was time to give this old girl a much needed wash. The chair had some beautiful brass inlay. Well, say beautiful, it wasn't beautiful at the moment, but it soon will be. Yeah, this, this was in a bit of a sorry state. The glue had just totally dried out. It had popped out and obviously it had been bent over time. So first thing to do was to remove it and then start with the repair. As I mentioned, the existing glue had all dried out, so I removed the brass and all I'm doing here is I'm attempting to remove as much of the old glue as I possibly can. So I'm just using a very small flathead screwdriver just to gently take out any excess glue. And this took quite a while actually. The glue was quite hard so you can see here I'm using a heat gun just to try and soften that up a bit so persevere and then it's on to doing a test fit of the brass What I realized here is that the end of the bottom piece of brass was out of shape and the curve didn't fit the rooted out rebate. So all I did there is tighten it up as close as I could to the corner and because it's brass, I could just bend that with my hands. As it's been bent out of shape, when I fit it, it wasn't matching up with the top piece of the brass. It was, it was overlapping. So all I'm doing here is just filing it down in order for it to fit as flat as possible. Mm -hmm. 
Once I was happy with the test fit, I then applied the super glue and fit the brass. And then I just clamped it tight until it was dry, which is obviously seconds with super glue. And then it was on to the next step, which is to sand. And the reason for this is that even though I got the most of the glue out, it was slightly still proud, the brass. And it also allowed me to not only flatten it, but to buff it to a nice shine. And you can see there, I started off with 120 grit and finished with 240. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. You got the sneezes? Oh. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Go get him, Daisy. You go get him. Go on. Who's that? The next repair was to the solid mahogany mouldings to the front of the chair. And fortunately, even though these had fallen off, the customer had kept these in a bag and they were all present and correct and just needed to be glued back on. What I soon realised when I was flattening down the brass inlay repair, the finish was coming off really easily with the sander. And as I've mentioned, this is solid mahogany, this chair. I think there was only one slight piece of decorative veneer on the back plate at the bottom. So this was all sanded to remove the finish. No paint stripper needed. I know this is mahogany and therefore it's a very red wood but I used some of the brown toned walnut stain just to try and reduce the amount of redness. It was never going to look brown without toners etc but this kept it looking fairly natural but just sort of dulled down the redness. As I'm editing this and watching it back, it seems like it's taken very little time to get to this point. It certainly didn't, but this is the top coat and I'm using a satin finish clear lacquer. And the chair itself will get three coats of this. 
as you'll see in a second. In between coats, I flattened down the dried lacquer with a brown paper bag. It's very, very slightly abrasive and it works a treat. For the eagle-eyed amongst you out there, you can see that this seat pad needs a bit of attention and reupholstering entirely. And that's what we're going to do next. The customer has chosen some material that suits their decor and it's a William Morris print. And you'll see at the end, it, it just is exactly the right material for this style of chair. So all I'm doing here is removing all the existing upholstery so I can start to repair and reupholster. I haven't done an awful lot of upholstery. I think uh, in total I've done about four simple chairs and a class this is quite a simple job. So it's just a case of sort of taking your time, doing a bit of research, I use YouTube quite a lot, just doing the best you can and I'm quite a perfectionist so it did take me a while to upholster this chair but obviously I just wanted to make sure that everything was spot on. For anyone that's wondering what on earth this filling is, it's actually horse hair which was used many many years ago for upholstery. And it's, you could see there, there's some little strings there that sort of stitch it in to hold it in place. But we're doing away with that and we're going to use some more modern materials, probably a little bit more hygienic and for more comfort. Once I'd removed the upholstery, I could see that the joints of the frame were a little bit loose and the glue had dried out. So it was just a case of knocking the joints out. Luckily, the uh, the dowels held and they didn't break. So it's just a case of doing that using a drill to get rid of the existing glue and then re-gluing the joints and clamping ready for the reupholstery. Now the glue was dry, it was time to start putting the new upholstery on there. So the first thing to do, measure the existing seat cover so I can cut the appropriate material. And what I'm doing here is adding new seat webbing to the frame. And what I'll say here is, if you can notice, I'm using a web stretcher there. And I actually made this out of some materials I had in the workshop. These are $70 or £50 to buy online, 
and if you're interested I did video it and I can put that video on just let me know in the comments so I'm also using here a compressed air staple gun I've done upholstery before with a handheld manual staple gun and it's hard work you know this this was a great investment it wasn't particularly expensive and it's just so much easier with one of these so I've put the webbing on I'm now putting the hessian cover just to cover the bottom of that and then it's on to the filling As I mentioned previously, I've done away with the horsehair filling and I'm using some upholstery foam instead. So all I've done is I've measured it out and I'm just cutting it to a, roughly the size of the frame. I will then adhere that to the frame using some contact glue and then I will just shape the top just so it's not square once the material is on. We are coming to the end of the video now, so I'd just like to say thanks again for watching and please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos. I do really appreciate all the support I've got and hopefully you'll watch many more videos from me.